Hi there, and welcome into this astrology energy update for November 2023, uh, where I'm going to be sharing some of the messages that have been coming through from these beautiful coast redwood trees on our uh, recent camping trip to the Humboldt Redwood State Park with me and my children. Uh, and just sharing what is some of the astrology, what is some of the energy that you might expect uh, for this bulk of November and bringing us into December. And yes, those are my kids in the background playing a board game. So, uh, welcome into this channel. My name is Christy Whistler. I am an intuitive, an astrologer, and if you couldn't tell, I'm also a parent of two very unique um, special children. So, if you are struggling right now and you just can't figure your way forward, you're feeling really lost, really tossed around, uh, by this moment in time, I mean, who isn't, uh, me included, certainly having my moments, please reach out. I do offer um, astrology birth chart readings so we can understand what your soul is asking you and why you're having these experiences that you are, what you're being called to learn from and get transformed and grow through those experiences. We also can do uh, messages from your soul and intuitive reading to better guide you at this time. So you can find out more information at my website at christywhistler.com or leave, um, leave a comment below or send me an email and you'll find that information below. And please like this video, subscribe to this channel. It really does help me so much to connect with others like yourself. And <laughs> I will do my best to bring in this information um, to be a channel to let this information flow through me while I'm also still being a parent and hearing them in the background. <laughs> it's always um, a bit of a task to do. So please uh, bear with me. All right. So November. I wish I could give you, you know, just a thumbs up of like, hey, you got through October, right? And the eclipse energy, it's all good. But I can't um, because that intensity is going to continue because it really needs to. If we are going to be stepping into this new world, this new earth, bringing in these codes from the future for these children. And oh, wow, we've got some amazing beings who are going to be coming, who are coming onto this planet and will be in the future. But we really have to clear the way first. We have to go through this dismantling, breaking down period. Everything that is not working in our current systems, our governments, structures, educational systems, everything that's not working, that is corrupt, it needs to get torn down. And that is this work of Pluto in Capricorn. Pluto, which is still square the moon's nodes right now, and was at this eclipse. So this eclipse period was really striking this just gong for this next six months. And we're going to be carrying that frequency and that sound until April. And so many of us are really being initiated into this healing journey to step into being a sacred warrior, to be sentinels in our lives of really honing in of when we need to take action, to take a stand, and then when do we step back and allow to know when to act we first need that stillness. We need that returning back to 
our deep feminine energy to this dreaming energy of the grandmothers tuning back into who we are and what are we here to do? What is your soul's calling? Do you know what that is? And so it's this pausing in our life. You take that pause and then through that pause and that silence and that stillness, that is how we will each know our way forward. How we will each know the right time to act, the right way to act. And um, I'm just gonna, just, I'm so, such, <laughs> I feel so blessed right now because uh, I can feel that information coming through. And I felt that on a trail hike that I was doing with the children yesterday and I was, I could feel myself touching into it, but I couldn't fully tap all the way in because I was being distracted and mom, where's this? Mom, where's that? I need help with this. I want to keep walking, right? And I had to really just let this go and be like, I have to trust that this message will come in at the right time. Um, and I'm certainly getting emotional because um, it was frustrating. You know, I was really setting that time for myself and like they had their snacks and good to go. And then I couldn't even get five minutes to really hone in on this message. So I'm just, um, I'm in such gratitude that that message did come through and the right time the right way and even though they're being loud right now they're not their energy is not um, hooking into mine so to speak so I am I am very, very grateful <laughs> um, very grateful for that and so as we're coming into November really really big energies guys um, the eclipses were intense the rest of November especially this mid part um, okay, clearing that energy. It's, it's going to be no exception either. Um, that is just this moment of time that we are in. And what's really interesting too is I was going to film this video and then it'd be another week before I could get it up to you because my trip was going to take us from um, here at the Redwoods to Oregon. And then I had to let go and surrender and accept that that wasn't going to happen because it was going to be raining and cold the entire time we were get there. And I was like, this isn't going to work. I'm going to be miserable. They're going to be miserable. I'm just going to let this go, right? Let, let go and let God, as the saying is. And so here I'm able to get this out to you earlier than I expected. So that's really interesting. I'm just like, huh, that wasn't planned. And yet it's obviously perfect. The timing is perfect and here comes in that feminine energy of getting the timing right and knowing when, feeling when through your heart, through your gut, not through your mind of when that is. So I'm filming this on um, November 10th. So I'm definitely in the energies of the 1111 portal. And then, okay, let me just tune in. So the 11th through the 13th, Mars in Scorpio is going to be in exact opposition to Uranus and Taurus. We have the sun there in Scorpio as well as Ceres. So what does this mean? Um, really make sure that you are grounding yourself. The world, your own inner experiences can be very intense, very emotional, explosive, passionate, eruptive. These are all some of those Scorpio energies, all ruled by Pluto in Capricorn, finishing that energy up. You got 29 points? I was nine I was not high school. So, so who won? 
Me. You won? Me. That was that was very kind of you, Kate. Did uh, you let him win? Huh? Did you let him win? No. No, he just won? Yeah. I was I also didn't really want points, so I was a carry. Okay. Um, do you guys want to go play plushies while I finish up? Yeah. And then we'll Hello, do a YouTube. little walk. Yeah, this is gonna be on YouTube. See now? Okay, so why don't you go play for a little bit? And they're going to play. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> totally great. Um, okay, Scorpio energy. I said Pluto in Capricorn. So everything I said at the beginning of the video about these structures and systems, governments, okay, um, really breaking down what secrets are being unearthed. This is really scraping into the bottom of the barrel. Everything that you are not wanting to see in your own unconscious or the unconscious being reflected back to you from everyone around you. South node of the moon in Libra. Venus is also in Libra right now. Okay. So yeah, this is going to be intense. This is Scorpio is full spectrum experiences transcending everything that you thought possible is Scorpio. So secrets coming to light that you don't want to see within yourself, others, governments. Okay, that's totally on course for what can be happening right now. Um, lots of passion. Um, really wanting to go forward. Mars is really, uh, it can be a very explosive energy at this time. Wanting to go deep and not necessarily caring about who it tramples over doing so. So, and then on the 13th, we have a new moon in Scorpio <laughs> with all those energies that I just talked about. So, um, Okay, and then bringing in that Uranus opposition. Okay, so Uranus is really wanting to break free. Uranus is that divine discontent energy. So take a step back. Think about our world, your life. These things where you're like, gosh, that's not really working. Um, the school system isn't really working for my child or how we have traditionally arranged holiday gatherings with my family is actually super unsupporting for for me and for my family and like those that's what i mean those those little itchy sweater kind of things can really start to lift off from now into december as well which is kind of why i'm bringing in the holiday stuff so if you find that you're really discontent about how you're doing holiday gatherings or whatever this is the time to break free of those molds and to start moving into what actually is supportive, Taurus, for you and your way and your pace. And so be very mindful. This um, Uranus opposition can bring in very sudden, unexpected moments, like the rug being ripped out from under you lightning bolts, electricity, you just didn't see these things coming and it's forcing you, pushing you to go into this whole other direction that is actually more in line with what you want. So there's this real journeying down into the depths of our unconscious that's happening in ourselves, again, society, and really make sure to give yourself the grace to go into them. The space and the compassion and the slowness. So if you find that you're having a very an emotional intense experience, like you're having this gut reaction, Mars, your instincts are telling you to go in this particular way, and it, it can feel like, wow, so much bigger than it actually is. Those are clues for you that this is your soul speaking to you through your unconscious. So give yourself that space, Taurus, to listen. We're really balancing this intensity of Scorpio 
with the slowness of Taurus to pull yourself out of that frying pan so you can actually digest what this experience is teaching you. And to bring in just a little bit of the Ceres energy, again, she is this mother asteroid goddess. So how can you hold a safe space for yourself to process this right now, whatever's coming up for you, or to be a safe haven for others to process what they're going through? I've, um, I've certainly been noticing that there is less grace and compassion with the people that I'm meeting out in my life right now. Like, they're just, they're in overwhelm. And when I enter the picture with, you know, Eric, who is having a much different experience of the world, who doesn't understand a lot of the social cues, like, they don't have as much compassion for him and that he needs to learn at his own pace. And so I, even though it's I'm holding boundaries and teaching and guiding him, I'm also in speaking up for him as necessary within myself and my being, I'm also trying to really recognize, okay, I don't know their full story. They might be in real overwhelm themselves right now. And so having Eric, you know, rushing into the elevator right after we've gotten home from a trip, as opposed to, you know, you're you're supposed to just wait to let anybody else come out of the elevator first. Okay, these are the social cues that society expects us to do and to be an act. And here's this child who can't. Um, always do that you know he's definitely learned as he's gotten older but after being in the car for six seven hours and he needs to pee he's running in there and doesn't really give a shit if there's someone else coming out you know but that person does care and she wants no you need to not let your child do this you know it's just like You know, just kind of taking a deep breath and just being like, no, I'm not going to take that on. I'm not going to take on your projection. I verbally expressed and taught him, and that may not be good enough for you. You might be going through a lot and may not have that extra grace for him and compassion. And so that's kind of what I mean. And that's a little bit of this energy that I'm picking up from the, the collective around me. And that certainly with Eric, he's really triggering more people because he is that very Aquarian soul who's coming in. He's this revolutionary. He's doing things differently. And he's breaking out of those glass ceilings. Uranus, okay, Aquarius. He's breaking free of them. And that can be very triggering for people. So I'm also trying, again, to hold extra compassion, understanding that this can be a really hard experience for them, even though he's not even nine years old and they're like, you know, in their 50s and 60s, like they should have more compassion. (laughs) Like, come on, you're the adult here. Um, But I'm trying to hold that too. So I hope that little story kind of grounds you in um, for what this experience can be like. And um, just to add in a little bit as well, for especially for parents who do have um, children that are unique and different, um, please let me know what your children might be experiencing, um, picking up on these very intense. Sorry, I just thought I heard somebody. Uh, energies from the collective, from the sun. Oh my gosh, um, sun's been very active this week as I'm filming this solar wind I think we're like 11 hours high intense solar wind and we have um, a coronal mass ejection CME that's hitting as well around the 11th of course right I mean it's it's a lot so if you're noticing this with your kids please let me know like what are their experiences because we're all going to have a little bit different because we are are different um 
So Eric has been a non-stop ball of electricity and the only time he's calmed down is when we are here in nature. So am I looking forward to going back to Los Angeles a week earlier than I was expecting? No. <laughs> Not really. Oh, he's around. Hello. Um, You're my new plushie. And we went to the Legend of Bigfoot store and they both got Bigfoot plushies because who would not want a female Bigfoot plushie Lee along with painted pink toenails, right? <laughs> this sticker's on. Excuse me, clearing that. Okay, so Eric, a lot of movement. If you could see him right now, he's running up and down. Yeah, we'll go, we'll go walking as soon as I'm done with this one. Um, and yeah, at some point, because we are going to get some more firewood. So, um, Kate, she's been very emotional. Very, very emotional. <laughs> um, she's been doing a lot more of that picking on Eric, like really poking at his energy. You know, like, you know that saying, like, don't wake the sleeping bear. Like, that's what she's doing. <laughs> it's like, please don't wake the bear. Oh my God, please. I'm trying to get a break here. Um, also... Like they were here playing um, this board game, Go Nuts for Donuts. And there's a lot of really big emotions and I had to hold extra space for that uh, more so than normal. Sorry, I'm just looking at my notes because there's no way I could keep all of this track in my mind. Um, um, and since I've been out here, they've both been a lot calmer. Not perfect. And I have not been perfect either. Like I've definitely had moments of frustration and snapping. So when that comes up for you, again, just really give yourself grace. Hold compassion for yourself and forgiveness. Like this, this is not an easy moment that we're going through that we've, and our souls have said yes to going through. So um, some of the information in the, that was coming through to help you through November, do less. That was probably one of the biggest messages from the trees is really go into stillness. Stop trying to do everything you are doing in your life and give yourself permission to put things down. And, um, if you have a hard time doing that, you are not alone. <laughs> and I will certainly have to really put that into practice when I go back to Los Angeles. It's much easier for me to do that here. And then the minute I come back into that city environment, it's just like I get permeated with that fast paced doing, doing, doing energy. So do less, tune into nature, and be still. If you find yourself really working through something very intense, like I said, the Scorpio energy, go pull back, go get your feet on the bare earth if you can, um, or just go outside, feel the sun, breathe the fresh air, and try to start processing what you're feeling. Like Give yourself that space to digest it. And also, again, just to bring through, we have the holiday season coming up, certainly here uh, in the U.S. Say no to those obligations that do not feel right for you. Really want to honor yourself when you come into that yes energy. That energy of this feels good and this is what I want to do. Um, and if we don't, me included, there's going to continually have these initiation moments, these um, Pluto squaring the node moments of just intensity. The pressure is building that Uranus opposition, okay? That spring is going to get sprung whether or not we want it to. So try to meet whatever energy is coming into your life. You don't want to resist it. Go with it, flow with it so it's not going to sting as hard and as sharp when that does go.
So um, I, I do hope that's been helpful. And again, keep in mind that when we pull back and we go still and calm, this is when we're going to get the, um, those action steps forward because the moon's north node is an Aries. So this is setting us up for the eclipse in April. That uh, north node eclipse in April is going to be conjunct Chiron. So we are so being supported right now. We're, we're going through this intensity and this deep clearing, this deep healing. It's not comfortable. It's totally not. I see you. I hear you because I'm in it too, but we are being supported and this is for our soul's best growth, our opportunities, this again, the sacred warrior that we're stepping into. But first we have to really know who we are. What is it that we love? What is our way and pace of being and um, being and doing in the world like who are we and once we know what that is once we know who we are then we can start taking those action steps forward and that will be that energy coming up in april so i hope you can see how we're being given this gift one step at a time so <laughs> Uh, again, I do hope that was helpful and I hope you as well have felt the energy from these redwood trees around me and the specific message that they have had for you. Please um, let me know how you're doing. Um, leave a comment. Where is this landing for you? I would love to know and to see you, witness you and what you are going through. And again, if you do need extra support, please reach out. I do have those um, different reading offerings available and you'll find more at my website. And please like this video, subscribe to this channel, share. This really helps me so much uh, to continue doing these uh, and knowing that they are supporting you um, really helps me to do them even when I have the craziness of my life going on around me. So anyway, I, I do hope you have a wonderful November and you can really flow with these intense energies as they're coming up. Don't, 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 don't. I'm sorry. Okay, so with that, my um, phone getting knocked over, I'm gonna say goodbye. Uh, we're gonna go on a walk now. Bye bye. So Make thanks sure to guys. Make like and Yeah. And visit ChristyWhistler.com. Yeah, visit ChristyWhistler.com. Anyway, thank you all so much for being here. Um, again, blessings and good good luck. And do you want to say hi now? I do a hello. What do you want to say? Um, come here. Come here. Bye bye. Well, you gotta come here. They can't see you when you're that far down. Come here. <laughs> is that is that all you want to do? Okay, he can't. All right, guys. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.